Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Spy Family, or as I mentioned it the other day, I said it was Spy X Family, and <laughs> I didn't know that the X was decorative. This is a ongoing manga series by, I know, Tatsuya Endo, and um, I am really excited to be talking about it. If you are new to my channel or this space, then hi, welcome. <laughs> my name is Shelly and I really, really love books and reading. And I've come to realize about myself that half of the fun of reading is talking about it enthusiastically with those who are willing to listen. So if you also like books and reading or just like hearing somebody talk energetically about the subject, I would gently encourage you to subscribe and stick around. Um, I also would just say, you know, like the video, that always helps. Um, what else helps? Subscribing, liking, oh, and I have a Patreon account now, which is another way to support the channel. Specifically, it's a financial way to support the channel. Um, just being here is enough, but <laughs> Patreon is there. And what I'm doing, what seems to be working for me, is uploading, like having early access to all of my videos on Patreon before they are on big YouTube. <laughs> so that seems to be working, that like whole shindig seems to be working for me right now. Consider joining the Patreon. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna actually get into the meat of the video now. I need an order of events for this video because I have actually read quite a bit and so I'm not necessarily going to go plot beat by plot beat in this review unlike some of the One Piece reviews I do. I don't know how many of you have read Spy Family and so how, how interested you all are in hearing full spoilers on every arc. And so where I'm at right now is that I have read through the first four arcs, which is through the first 14 chapters of Spy Family. I have read the introduction arc, admissions interview arc, Eden beginnings arc, and secret police. So that's where I'm at. So in terms of spoiler versus non-spoiler, this is how this video is going to unfold. First, I want to talk about my outfit because it does have to do with Spy Family. Then I want to talk about manga in general. Then the premise of Spy Family, the characters, and then some specifics. <laughs> and I suppose the specifics are going to be the most spoilery. Though, in general, this whole ordeal, the whole story is, you know, once you understand the premise, which again, it would be like what would be on like maybe the, the tin or the back cover of Spy Family. And then you see kind of how it unfolds in the first couple of chapters. Literally the first two or three is the main setup. And then once you kind of get that <laughs> under your belt or like once you see that and understand the premise, the way everything unfolds, it just depends on how how you would see it as, you know, what you would consider a spoiler, I suppose. So again, I'm sort of going through this a little bit blindly unsure of the audience that I'm talking to. Audience, whether you've all read and known the material or you're coming for a specific recommendation. So I think the most, when I talk about the things that are delighting me or my specific thoughts about the series, I'll mention that and I'll have a timestamp and then I'll say how I feel about it as a whole and that will be unspoiled. My goodness, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to label it, you know, semi-spoilery when you get to that chapter. Wow. Okay, so this outfit is, my, the outfit that I'm wearing, I made a short on it. Um, because I am just, I, because of my interest in the character design in Spy Family, <laughs> specifically for um, Yor. Is it Yor? Yeah, Yor. So Yor, she's, she's just, 
um, the mama of the family is just such a delight and I was really inspired by her looks. The thing is, is that I don't want, when I'm inspired by something and I want to recreate it, my iPad fell and it's become a huge tool for me because that's where I, <laughs> that's where I actually read all of my manga and all of the graphic novels for the most part. And so, oh my gosh, I was so worried that I cracked it. Everything is fine. It's going to stay on the ground there because I don't think I need it and I don't want it to fall off my lap again. So I am really inspired by the character design. And the thing is, is that I don't ever want to cross over to cosplay territory in my own dressing. What I like to feel with any kind of art piece or photography or children's book or anything like that, I want to feel the inspiration and then look through what I have without having to buy anything and take that inspiration and like fuel that energy into my own closet. And so that's what I did with this outfit. This is more like you're at home, um, the, char the, the mama character at home. I have a slight I'm not sure if I'm saying all these names right, so we're just gonna go with it. So I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, you're at home, <laughs> so, like dressed down, not in her other mode, um, if you get my drift. And so I will actually link the short in which I put together this outfit down below because, you know, it is directly um, inspired by Spy Family. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Okay, so I was realizing also sort of to lead into manga i was realizing that this genre in some ways is very or not genre because it's not a genre but this medium is very much up my alley in terms of the things that i enjoy i like the intersection of pictures and words to tell a story reliant on both to in order both to communicate the story so it's not an additional illustration perhaps on the side to enhance or to you know, breathe a sense of life into the story, you actually are reliant on images to tell an integral part. It is an integral part of the story. And just the words alone don't stand on their own. I rhymed. <laughs> and so one needs, one actually needs the, the visuals to tell the story properly. And so I've been really, um, I think I've been trying to get at why I like manga and I think this is it and Spy Family is so so delightful in that the characters are so well drawn um actually like physically like actually visually seeing them they're beautiful <laughs> like they're so beautiful um and also and, and just crisp and clear and there is an aesthetic to them that is just perfect so, you know, it's it's not lost on me that the aesthetic of Spy Family is really kind of um, getting in and amongst me and really help enhance the experience. So it's not just uh, the words on the page, it's not just the visuals, it's the blend of, the bo of both that is really just wonderful. And as somebody who has a history of loving, I have reviewed picture books on my channel, I love children's picture books, I've done some graphic novel reviews, I've just really kind of um, dug into this, this genre kind of again and again, or like I tend to cycle back to it. Um, this uh, The genre of pictures and words creating a story, um, this the whole manga thing is just really kind of um, been sitting right with me overall. So yeah, there's that. Okay, let's actually get into the premise. So Spy Family is about, it, it is really about three characters. Our main character is Twilight, who is a spy. And it very much has a um, Cold War feel, um, a, a, you know, it, it is hearkening back to a time in which there are a lot of spies and counter spies and getting uh inf like secret information trying to infiltrate secret groups um it really is hearkening back to like the sent like <laughs> the, the 60s um the 50s yeah i guess it is really hearkening back to like the 50s and 60s i think of james bond um, I think of, you know, when there's just, you know, when, when spies were at the height of 
um, media, when there is, you know, what, you know, who's doing secret things, who's doing, un who's undercover, um, who's going to be double crossing one another. And I feel like it's really kind of hearkening back to that media in that sense when we initially meet um, Twilight, who is a, an excellent spy. Um, he's great at his job. He immediately talks about how he's on his own for the love of his job and now he's he has a new mission and his new mission is for world peace um, and, and it's like it's integral for world peace and so all of it is just there's this um it's on this epic scale and we're immediately met with a spy who's excellent at their job and part of his new mission which of course is integral to the world at large <laughs> is that he needs to have a family because he needs to get close to someone named Donovan. Again, you know this immediately, so it's not a spoiler, at least in my opinion. So we are meeting Donovan and, um, no, we, he, Twilight must, you know, get, get close to Donovan and sort of infiltrate maybe his secret world. Yeah. So he's, he needs to, that's his target. And part of this mission is that Twilight needs to put together his uh, a family, like a fake family. And so he's like, what do I do? And also part of this mission is that the way to get close to his target is to perhaps go through his son and get established at an academy called Eden Academy, which is for the elite. It's for, it's like the creme de la creme. <laughs> you know, of, imagine a, a private school for little kids starting at maybe five years old and going up until high school and or that's how what I imagine it being and it's of course um just the the top of the top the tippy tippy top of it all and so he needs to not only have a child <laughs> get a child somehow Twilight needs to get a child somehow but he and and a wife you know um but he also needs to make sure that this child can get into Eden Academy and so we are we're meeting this spy scrambly scrambling to get his mission on the road I'm laughing because the premise is just it's so like delightful you know it's just so fantastic so he goes to an orphanage or he goes to a place in which he must you know find a child and, and take her home and the person running the orphanage I think that's what it is it's an orphanage is sort of pushing on him this child that is strange that you know immediately that she's been rejected over and over again and boy is she cute she is her name's Anya and she is adorable not only is she adorable in the black and white version she has these massive eyes and her hair her hair I think I think it's hair or decorative pieces on the side or like little buns in her hair on the side and so she almost looks like a cat crossed with a really adorable child again these amazingly big eyes and then she's like this small you know this small person um i haven't taken very many drawing classes and i haven't dabbled too too much into drawing i mean i have a little bit but not too much but they say you know it's like with an adult you have their head and then their body is like seven or eight of their head lengths when you're drawing a character so you can even count like proportionally I think it's seven or eight um clearly I'm not an artist but with a child when you draw a child it's it's like two or three of their head lengths so everything is like squashed down and for Anya it's like two of her head lengths so she's this like little tiny thing and her head is like super round and then the colored version is that she's got this pastel pink hair and these little like buns on the side and she is stinking adorable like I want to take her home and I want her as my child because she's so so cute so you know they're like you know the the or orphanage person the, the person who's in you know um uh, over Anya at this where she's familyless he like pushes her on to Twilight and um who's now going at he's his new name is Lloyd Forger which again I thought it was like clever in its own way that Forger is like um 
you know, it's a, a misdirection, it's a falsity, it's, it's a fake thing that you're doing. You are um, falsely signing someone else's signature or falsely creating documents that aren't there. So it's, I thought it was clever that their last name is Forger because they're not a real family, they're a fake family trying to be a real family. And so, you know, he takes Anya home and then you know, adventure ensues from there. And there are some really great um, action scenes. And in like by the end of the first chapter, Lloyd and Anya are, are bonded. And, you know, he's kind of like, I'll take you home. Like, you, you're mine now sort of thing. Like they bonded. And Anya's made it really clear that like she wants to stay with Lloyd. But the thing that I haven't mentioned, and you will know if you read the back of the tin, is that Anya is a, is a telepath. She can read minds. And so... <laughs> Um, and actually it was so funny because one of my dear friends picked up Spy Family and watched the first episode. Um, like someone who doesn't read, I mean, I think he might read some manga and watch some anime, but like we did it totally separately. Like <laughs> here I am reading Spy Family and he had just watched Spy Family and he was under the conception, he was under the idea that Lloyd knew that Anya was a telepath and I looked it up and I might have misread but he doesn't Lloyd Forger doesn't know that his daughter his fake daughter is a telepath uh, but what's interesting is that she has sussed out that her dad is a liar she like knows that he's lying and she sort of attributes it to like this wonderful quality he's like he's the biggest liar in the world with like heart eyes you know um and she really admires that quality in him and it, so it's like she knows something about him that he doesn't realize that she knows and then he doesn't realize that she is or has this ability to read people's minds or to, to see their thoughts or hear their thoughts and so you know it's like this it's got this little twists and turns and I really I really enjoyed that and then in the next episode you know he's like we're gonna try and not episode I'm not watching it in the next chapter he's like we're trying to get Anya into Eden Academy so that he can get close, so that T Twilight can get close to his target and they need a mom. <laughs> so, and so you meet this, you meet this woman, Yor, who is, and I actually find her really interesting because one gets a glimpse, the readers get a glimpse as to what it, how she is perceived or at least how it's written um, in this world that she is perceived as to being a single woman who hasn't had a boyfriend it, at all and it's like she's looked down upon it's not like that she is looked down upon yours looked down upon she, she's made fun of people worry about her people close to her worry about her and it's it's a, like truly like a, a negative or a bad quality for a woman to not have had a boyfriend or not be interested in having a boyfriend to me that is kind of an, an antiquated idea you know um that that idea is is to me like passe i feel like it's more okay in societal context in 2024 for any person to choose being single or not to go on dates or not to to opt out of that part of their life and to have a a completely full and beautiful life not being not having a partner um and that it doesn't make anyone any less and so it's interesting seeing this glimpse again that's why it, maybe it, why it adds to this feeling that it's of like the 60s you know <laughs> or like back in time because here she is and it's like all the women are gossiping about her and a lot of people have these opinions about your that she is that she's single and that it's this bad thing and that like maybe a guy doesn't want her because of how she comes off or that she's awkward or um and there's you know a lot of speculation as to her singleness and and so then um he, i think it's i forget how they meet now the actual thing the actual like coming together but she gets invited to i think it's sort of it's really by chance um that i her now it's like kind of coming back to me that her and lloyd meet um he and and they they mutually kind of understand they mutually get to this point they get to this point where they can mutually help each other so she is going to go to a party and she's like 
let me introduce you to my husband, you know, who is, you know, successful and handsome and, and all of that. Um, and he needs a wife to, to create this family unit in order to get into Eden Academy. Again, it's sort of, again, hearkening back to this idea of like the sixties because, or like this older, like an older or a more antiquated idea. And it could be a cultural thing. I really don't know because Eden, Eden Academy, they're like, and you need to have a, a mother and a father and a child in order to get into Eden, Eden Academy. And I'm like, that is so like passe. <laughs> like, families are built in so many different and interesting ways that it just seems like an old idea. Um, but you know, it's like, I, it's, it's so funny because it's like, I know this in my mind, but I still go with it. And I'm like, it's the premise of the story and that's fine. Um, and it doesn't bug me. I just, it's something that I've noted in my mind. So they know they can like mutually benefit each other. If she, if your has a, a boyfriend or a husband, then people at work will stop judging her. A family member will stop being worried about her and she will be able to like be more socially acceptable essentially. And for Lloyd, if he has a family, then he can, you know, essentially or ostensibly has a higher chance or has even a chance to get his daughter into Eden Academy. And so they've they've come to their this agreement. Of course, Yor doesn't know that uh, Lloyd is a spy and, and, and um, he doesn't know, Lloyd doesn't know that Yor is an assassin. <laughs> like, she, she, she kills people for her job as part of her other job. Like she's a clerk. Um, a county clerk, uh, you know, does a government, sort of boring government job. There's no files on her, but like her second alternate identity is this, uh, this assassin and she is fierce <laughs> at what she does and really good at her job. And in a weird way, that is so, it's so delightful. It's so powerful. It's like, she's got this power that she has internally for herself and she kicks other people's butts for a living and she's strong and I just like totally different. It's so funny too, even the way that she is presented, uh, yours presented in, in, um, both contexts. It's like she ha in her home life as a mother or as a, as a woman who is unassuming, she wears these like sweater dresses and leggings and has a headband in her hair. And, um, and then as a, an assassin, she's wearing this like, black dress <laughs> that is just I mean pretty awesome and these amazing boots and with these this like um chest detail meaning that there's like fabric that goes all the way up to her neck and has like cutouts in it and the fabric uh detailing that is on her dress is mirrored on her knee-high boots and she is just like this fierce woman <laughs> that's kind of awesome so it's very surprising and then Yor doesn't know that Anya is a telepath. So it, the whole thing is like they're all, you know, keeping secrets from one another. And the person who probably knows the mo most is Anya because she can read other people's thoughts. And that essentially is the premise to, to the whole thing. They're this fake family with a spy and an assassin and a magical daughter who can read minds. And they're on a mission, on really Twilight's mission, to get close to someone named Donovan, and they have to do it through getting into an Eden Academy. And that essentially is the premise of Spy Family. I've actually gone on and on about the characters. <laughs> so, like, the characters along with the premise and how they come together. I do want to cycle back to the fact that Lloyd, in my mind, I always see... The guy who is in, let me look him up, I forget. Lloyd reminds me of Justin Hartley. This is kind of an obscure reference to me from the show This Is Us, <laughs> which I have seen. He's also got a role in Smallville, which my husband has been re-watching or watching lately. So I don't know the way that uh, Lloyd Forger is created and his stance and his sort of like even the way that he acts like I can only think of Justin Hartley the whole like the whole time and it's not like I've even I don't even think I've watched all of the this is us 
seasons, but that's who I think of. That's who I think of. And, um, and so I just wanted to make sure that I cycle back around because just know that that's who's on my mind when I'm reading uh, Spy Family. Okay, so sp some specifics and maybe what I would consider like sli slightly spoilery would be uh, the just specific details about the story. So when they get to the interview for Eden Academy, what was so great is the guy who is all about elegance. <laughs> That gets me every single time. I am just so, it's so funny. He reminds me, the, the man who says elegance, that's what he's going to be referred to as until I get his name down. Um, but he reminds me of uh, somebody from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I also mentioned Chitty Chitty Bang Bang in one of my other videos um, about One Piece. And I don't, I don't know why that's caught in my mind that movie is caught in my mind but just like the monocle and even the fact that he's like elegance and like his um facial hair uh which is very sculptural on his face um <laughs> he's just so funny and so as the forger family is like fumbling through this interview and making choices that really are like odd and awkward and um and and so it's so funny because you know he'd be like but it is such elegance <laughs> so I just I can't even like that's what really gets me every single time I laugh so hard at that um and I so that is really I think the the trope or the joke that I am just laughing at the gag I think it's what, what it's called what it's called is like so funny to me and what's actually funny is that the elegance thing is actually deeper than one's appearance um or, or even like moving through the world with a kind of grace to oneself it's really about like putting you know um helping others out um putting others before yourself it's like it's really rooted the way that the old the older man says you know elegance the board member um is really rooted in like a, in a sense in a kindness for others in a selflessness and that's what he sees as elegant and i just thought like not only is it just hilarious but it's rooted into some in something that is really charming and something I can get behind and I have just been really enjoying that aspect of it all and another sort of I guess detail about the story is that I don't feel like there's any rush I am it it's it's really kind of a methodic a, a slow unfolding of the stories um it, in a lot of ways they're fumbling their way the, the four the three of them um, the Forger family are fumbling their way through what it means to be a family and the questions at the heart of this like what does it mean to be a mother to Anya what does it mean to be a father to Anya uh, what is the role of a wife what is the role of a husband in some ways it it plays out very comically I mean I laugh heartily when I'm reading this story um, which is again something that surprised me but some of the deeper questions are actually a lot more profound than I would have ever thought <laughs> I would have ever considered um, and so it's just been really interesting and what does it mean to raise a child and um, Anya's perception of the world her being so young she's really just a little kid like maybe five or six in I, I don't really know what age she's supposed to be but I would imagine it would be around there um, and so she's you know the way that she perceives the world and her innocence and the, her, her the way that she's interpreting her parents are is so funny I also think it's hilarious that she watches spy shows and her dad is a spy I have to sneeze so like that's that's absolutely fantastic amazing wonderful delightful <laughs> in its own way is like her like it's just like this um this it's like it's it's so comical because it's got so many little details like the way that they're hiding their identities to one another the way <laughs> that you know she's watching a spy show though her dad is a spy and that she doesn't really I don't think understand that her dad is a spy that's been great and um there also is there was like this whole 
you know, the way that they get themselves into situations, mostly social, and it's just so weird. Um, so for example, you're in and, 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 and awkward, but in that awkwardness is humor. So your, your brother, Yuri, is also working for like a secret police that is against or like that is not on the same page as Twilight um, or Lloyd. And so sort of through this dinner where the brother is acting like a total, I don't know, he's he's just off the rails. Like in he's, he's such a jerk, he's so rude. But even in all of that, like Twilight, because he's so good at his job, realizes that her brother is working for the secret police. And so it's like, there's a suspicion among those uh, among among the four of them like or among those two so it's like twilight actually figured something out about yuri's brother um and he has to twilight has to continue to like hide his identity from both of them and it's even like higher stakes because her brother is someone who could possibly like harm or ruin twilight's mission which was really interesting and then also there's just not this rush that there's no like I feel like Yuri she's an assassin but I don't really you don't really know who she's working for I don't think or there's not like this grand idea of who she is working for and there's essentially this potential that she could go out to murder someone like her husband like she could be assigned to murder find out who Twilight is and murder him um that hasn't happened yet but there's like that potential there um and you know like her her job is kind of in direct contrast to Twilight's job um and it seems like she's been doing this for a really really long time and <laughs> so there's there's all of that uh underlying the the main sort of storyline which is to get to act like a real family and to get Anya into this school and to get her Anya close to the people that Twilight needs to get close to, which is like the main story. But then all of this like undercover secret spy assassin thing is like bubbling underneath, which is just so fun. And amid that fun, that sort of fun, those fun aspects of the story, it's fun to read. It's like super fast paced. It's super fun to read. It's super light, even though it has fighting in it and mag magic in it and um, magic as in like, you know, Anya's a telepath kind of thing. Um, it's just, it's super light to read and super enjoyable to read, which is so funny because recently I read a cozy fantasy or I started a co cozy fantasy, um, Legends and, Lat Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, and I did not like it. I thought the dialogue was really stilted. I thought the premise was quite cheesy. It's about an orc. You'll find out in the first three pages that it's about an orc who wants to start a coffee, cho coffee shop and um, wants to not be an orc anymore and it's about that journey of figuring out what it means to be a coffee shop owner and what even coffee is and super low stakes um, kind of story and in a similar way like them trying to figure out how to be a family this these group of people um, that am amid that there it's super low stakes they're just trying to figure out how to be a family I mean there's higher stakes to it but that's the essential part of it all and yet I find this cozy fantasy or like cozy reading or slice of life reading so much more enjoyable, delightful, funny, hilarious. Like I think it's quippier, funnier, more enjoyable, more cuckoo's bananas crazy, a little bit off the rails type of reading in a way that is delighting me way, way, way more than the book that was labeled cozy fantasy. So I thought I find that quite curious. Um, and yeah, that's it. So overall, I really, if you left and you came back, then welcome back. But overall, I've just been really loving Spy Family. It's the thing that I want to go to sleep reading. It's the thing that I'm just loving, like with a, the passion of a thousand burning suns, because it's so light and funny and charming. The characters are really interesting and the way that it's slowly unfolding and not just kind of laying everything out on the table of who everyone is because it's it's slow to get there it's making me really just enjoy each arc um, each part of the journey 
so much more and I'm really excited as to what the future arcs are going to bring because there is such a sense of there's such a good sense of humor amid it all. There's such beautiful art to look at and the characters are so, so fun. So that's it, that's it. Those are all my thoughts. Let me know what you think of Spy Family. I would love to hear from you. Um, thank you for just letting me ramble on. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And I guess that's it for me. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye.